Recently I stripped down my sample library to just a handful of sounds that I really like and this actually helped me to get closer to the sound that I really like. Now if you want to know how I did this and how you can do similar, watch this video, let's jump in. Friends, Luano here from roughinstudio.com. On this channel I share my daily learnings from my production sessions during the week specified to raw minimal and micro house so in this video i wanted to share a simple but very effective way that actually helps to work more efficient and finish more tracks and actually also brings you easier into a fl flow made right flow state right and this thing is actually sorting out your sample library because up to now my workflow was like uh, download the sample pack put it into a folder and then when I wanted to start the track I just added a random drum rack, added some random loops, added, I don't know, just random shit, right, without any structure in place. And how I do it now is actually a bit more structured and I know where to reach for fax sound or whatever it is. And as I mentioned I just started using this technique uh, a week or two ago. And this is my second track that I started with this sorted library. And it's not perfect yet, but uh, it will grow over time, I guess. I want to share how I went along with this process. And hopefully you can adapt some stuff to your very own workflow. So let's jump in with step number one. The first thing I did was dividing the different sounds into folders, right? So obviously, right? <laughs> so... Um, what I have is, what I created is um, a master samples library. This is actually how I downloaded everything. In my case, it goes to the downloads uh, folder and then I move it to this master sample library. So this means all the samples that are downloaded come into this folder, right? And then I have a, a second folder, which is called working sample library. This is actually the sounds that I extracted from the master sample library and added to the working sample library those are the sounds that i actually like and use and it's really not too many sounds in there um, i will explain the other folders in a minute and then inside this working sample library i have a go to sounds and those are all sorted by um, type of sounds right at the moment uh, as i mentioned i don't have i just started using this technique uh, one or two weeks ago and uh, the crucial thing is to not wanting to make it perfect from day one on right just start somewhere and then let that thing grow over time when you finish more tracks more music and then uh, it will grow so for example, the go-to sounds are my instrument tracks, my tools that I know work and that I know I like and use a lot, right? So in my case, um, if I start the track, I go to the go-to sounds. There is my raw minimal drum rack with the kick inside it. I have um, some... Uh, claps in there that I like, some the primer which is my synthesizer that I like, it's a really basic synth to be honest, but it gets me results, right, so, and also I have a, I have a MDD snake that I use a lot, you saw this in another video for the modular basses, kind of basses that I created, and this is all in my go-to sounds, but I will explain that to, to you further in my Ableton session in a minute. And this also contains drum racks and whatever, right? Right. So basically the go-to sounds are the sounds that I use for starting a track. And I know those tools work. So those are the go-to sounds for me. So the step number two, of course, is to link those uh, folders from the Finder to, the, to Ableton, right? It's really simple, you know how to do that working library because again we only need the working sample library right that's the sound there there's all the sounds in it that we really like and love so um, we go for that 
I added all of them inside the working li sample library. I have the one shots, I sorted them by one shots. Basses, there are no basses, but uh, again, drums, kick, closed heads, claps. Um, I don't have really many stuff in there, three claps, but it's okay. I would just say stick to five to ten um, sounds from every type, right? Kick, five to ten kicks claps open heads and then work from there and then i sorted them by one shots and loops right what i also did was extracting claps for example from uh, from loops right that i liked so for example this clap is coming from from a syllabexy loop that i from the sample market loop pack and then i layered something else on top of it and then i resampled it and put it into my claps folder right and this can again grow over time if you find or design new claps put it in there actually what i do is i create like need to sort out folder i put every new sounds that i like into this folder and then on a later date i sort them out put them into uh, into my working library and sort them into the specified types, right? If it's a kick, it goes to the kick. If it's an uh, effect sound, it goes to effect section and so on, right? And this is where actually the magic happens in my opinion. If we come up, let's say, uh, really nice effects that we designed over 20, 30 minutes and we just let it stay inside the track and never use it again, I mean, we wasted that, that time, right? We can put it into our working library and then use it again in later tracks, maybe adjust it or uh, whatever, right? Then step number three. three. So now the question is, is, what are we going to do with those one-shot samples from the working library, right? So what I recommend or what I did is creating one, two, three, drum racks go to drum racks that I then put in into this folder I have here some drum racks and again nothing crazy let's say I need some hi-hats right I go to the go to sounds drums and then I have the main hat and I know this is the hats for days max for life device that I showed in another video and I set it up with some hi-hats that I like 128s so it's basically called an inst instrument rack inside a drum rack. So I can quickly, let's say here, I need some uh, hi-hats. Then here I can swap. Through the samples, right? And uh, I explained the technique in another video, which calls how to create quickly hi-hat grooves and you can also google that uh, instrument rack within drum racks or 128s how to create that and the idea behind this uh, concept of using one two three go to drum racks uniquely created by you is that we get to know the sounds really well and we get a certain sound out of it because we pre-selected um, the samples already and move them to our uh, working library right so we are already sure that we like the sounds right and um, if you use other uh, drum racks that you like that's also okay of course just uh, yeah maybe just use this video as a guideline right so you can adapt it to your very own needs for me at the moment this works i have the go to raw minimal rack which just um, includes the clap that I sampled from a Tilapexi drum loop that I really liked and I added some other layers layers on top of it and at the moment I use this maybe on some level it doesn't fit anymore and uh, the key point is to actually limit ourselves to some tools and um, I think the, the concept is similar like uh, if we think back to the old school days of house when they used just a handful of drum machines, right? A lot of the old school house tracks were made with uh, 
I don't know, SH-101, 303, 909 drum machine, 808 maybe, uh, DX-7, uh, I don't know, you know what I mean. So I really believe creativity loves speed and limitation in some sort of way, right? Art is actually to limit ourselves to a certain tool, to a certain handful of tools that we know really well and those are the go-to sounds right and uh, yeah so this is the concept of the go-to sounds again I would say create your very own drum rack one two three drum racks I would start with just one and putting in the kicks that you like one kick that you like one clap and then check if they work together maybe build a pattern out of it Step number four is actually to create your very own sample library. And this happens over time, I believe. If you finish more and more tracks, you get some aha moments here and there, some tools and stuff that you probably like. And then um, what I started doing is actually going back to, to the sessions and just picking out some stuff that I really liked. And there are always some stuff that I really like in a track and there are some stuff that I don't like. So I just pick the good stuff, put it into the like need to sort out um, um, folder. And then on a later date, I sort them if I have enough stuff in there into my working library. And then over time we build up and build up and eventually, hopefully we get to a certain sound sound collection that is unique to ourselves and um, i just started out with doing this but um, i can imagine eventually we we get to a certain sound with this technique i i believe yeah to sum it up again number one create different folders create a master sample library or however you want to call it where everything is inside there um, then create um, two other folders which one is the working library folder and the other is the go to sounds right so again working sample library is contains only the loops and one shots and stuff that you really really like and the go to sounds contains ableton chains um, plugins maybe that you really like and love and know how we can get a good sound out of it. So you can quickly start the track with the go-to sounds. And then um, second thing, link all those folders to Ableton. Number three, create one, two, three, go-to um, drum racks that contains uh, some samples out of your working library that you sorted out beforehand, right? And number four, create a new folder that calls like and need to sort out and then go to older projects and just take out the sounds and maybe plug in chains uh, presets whatever and put it inside this one and then um, or implement it into the working library and build up your unique sound eventually what i want you to do is really just strive don't strive for perfectionism here the key point is, as mentioned before, just start somewhere, maybe choose five kicks, maybe two or three claps, you saw it here, I just chose three simple claps, right? Because in the end, I believe less is more, right? It doesn't matter if I have 20 claps and I only love maybe five out of it, that's, that's uh, the wrong point, right? And then just start somewhere, create one drum rack, with some sounds in it that you really like and you always can adjust them, right? You can, you can swap them out and uh, evolve later. Just start and then evolve.